I'll call the meeting order. Um, it's uh, 2 o'clock, Tuesday, May 14th, 2024, and I'll call this meeting to order. It's the uh, Wildlife Services Update, Shane Robinson and John Hall. I'll go ahead and turn it over to you guys. Well, not not a whole lot new. You know what I mean? You guys know who we are and what we do and stuff, yeah. but I did have to... I did have a little bit of work up here last year, last, probably about June. I had a lion kill some sheep, and I got it. Went and sat and watched with my thermal, when it come back in to feed on it that night. That was kind of down by the snake pit. Oh, oh okay. That little canyon behind the yeah. snake pit. Yeah. It was back up in there. So, got him. I know we got a collared wolf running around here because the trapper in Montana called me. About a month ago, I, I kind of know him from going to meetings. Well, he actually grew up a, with my wife, actually, but he mm -hmm. lives in Missoula. He collared a wolf this winter doing something over there with Montana Fishing Game, and he called let me know it's over in our area now. Oh, so, wow. Sorry. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I, it was up in that Pritchard, and they just pack up and move. It's up in that Pritchard, Murray country. Oh, really? So well, it, it was uh, one that they collared in Montana, and they yep, were watching, and they came up, over they here. They watched the collar, and it up and just came over here. Hmm. Wow. Well, then we got we got a pack that run around Beaver Creek too. On a I'm basis. sure there are. They're here, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, but I can't do much with them unless they unless they cause problems with livestock. Mm -hmm. That's where I get involved That's with the wolves, and I just don't have much trouble with them mm -hmm. up here. Well, there's not a lot of livestock. Right. Yeah. Now I'm going to be doing some work on the lower end of your county. Um, you know, down around Clarkia. Mm -hmm. Isn't that surprising? That's actually Shoshone County. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it is. I'm just over there yeah. Monday. Because yeah. uh, a cooperator that's that's a rancher that uses me, you know, they run cows in there in the summer. And they were showing me all these pictures just recently of a bunch of wolves that moved in last summer. So they're going to have me really watching that area this summer. Yeah. Because they, I've had quite a few wolves and removed quite a few wolves down around Bowville and Elk River and that country. But he's been pretty fortunate, you know, up there, Clarkia, but he's got, a, there's wolves in there now, hanging around his cows. When you say remove, you just transport them, or? Well, or when, you, they're, when they're harassing, when they're harassing the cows and getting into the cows, we have lethal removal. Okay. Yeah. Well, right now, we only got the one cattle operator in the county, that's Albert Walsh up there on, on Main River, mm -hmm. you know. But he's running 30, 40 head all the time, so in, I told him about Shane, so if he gets any predation problems, then he'll okay. we'll get a hold of him right away. And I still yeah. do a lot of stuff for, you know, little 4-H kids, a couple sheep or a couple pigs or anything like that. So, you know, yeah. we talked to the sheriff last time I was here trying to give him my, give him my number and stuff. So, mm -hmm. And then if you guys ever hear of anybody, make sure they know they can call us. Okay. Yeah. Usually they'll call Fish and Game, and Fish and Game's real good about referring them to me. If they're killing livestock, so. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and Shoshone County is not the agricultural county, you know, like we used to be. Yeah. But contributing to the whole thing for the Idaho Wool Growers Association and everything, you know, that allows us to get federal grants, too, if all the counties participate. Okay. So, yep. you know, and then we've got the resource when it's needed. So, yep. it is, and we pay less than Kootenai and the yes. other bigger, bigger counties, so. Yeah, it's don't have much like, problem with bears in our area either. No. Yeah. No. Luckily, I mean, there's grizzlies around. You know, mm -hmm. I did have <clears throat> that was kind of a big thing a couple years ago. Was a lot of grizzly problems up in Boundary County and Bonner County. Mm -hmm. But last year was totally calm. You know, we removed. There was three bears killed up there that summer, and kind of goes to show that remove a couple of the problem bears and that took care of all the problems there's still bears up there i mean mm -hmm. there was there was bears that got into a couple of beehives and i've seen a lot of sign down low but they're not getting into trouble yeah there was just two or three really bad bears that was i mean they were just relentless killing stuff and i mean two or three different people got charged that summer okay so they were just kind of bad attitude bears and, and the fish and wildlife it's my job to trap them i turn over custody of them and and fish and wildlife service made the call that we're removing them okay. yeah now will they do that i, I know there's a big push to uh bring reintroduce the grizzly bears into the bitterroot and so 
um, and I know you know that that's going to be a problem. So is that something that you the, that you'll you'll be handling with the Fish and Wildlife if something like that comes up, or is that a complete difference since they're they're being no. I, okay. I wouldn't be involved in the reintroduction at all. No, I mean, but if, if the predation, if if some, if one of them kind of goes rogue and everything and then causes problems, then you would be involved. In yeah, that. if it's here, if it's in Idaho, I don't yeah. go across state lines. There's another okay. trapper out of Missoula that covers up to the Montana line, but uh, okay. for sure, for that's sure. that's like that summer up in Bonners. I was the yeah. one that trapped those two grizzlies, and then two years before that, I trapped another grizzly up there that was killing stock. Okay. When they start causing problems, killing stuff, we're the lead on capture. Okay. But since they're an endangered species, I capture them, turn over custody to the Fish and Wildlife Service, and then they determine whether they're going to relocate or euthanize. Yeah. Okay. So that's their call. Okay. But yeah, I definitely get involved if they get causing problems with livestock. Now, if they're just a nuisance bear coming in here, getting in somebody's garbage in their backyard or something, mm-hmm. I'm not. I don't deal with that. Okay. It's livestock. They have to be. Okay. Yeah. Unless they ask, you know, I mean, I just helped set a trap this morning. This is, this is unusual too. Usually when lions kill a dog or a cat, mm-hmm. we don't go after those either. It's livestock. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. And fishing game usually doesn't either, but this has been kind of an extreme situation and they've done it. They've hit this little neighborhood like three different times as lion come running in and grab people's cats, right? While they're sitting around the campfire with the kids. Oh. And we're going after him. We set two, we actually use cage traps. They actually work for lions, but we set two traps just this morning. That's up in the Blanchard area. Okay. Trying mm-hmm. to remove this lion because he's just a neighbor, a neighbor saw it. And he says he thinks something's wrong with it or goofy because he actually walked right up to it. I mean, within three feet, he could have reached out and fed it. Oh, wow. wow. And the other neighbors were like, would you have a gun? Why do you shoot it? But, <laughs> because it caused the pro- all the problems he's mm-hmm. causing, you know. But it's definitely a weird lion. But he's we've got a couple cage traps hoping to get him out of there. Yeah. So, you know, we can... You know, if the sheriff requests it and the fishing game requests it, I can remove lions under those situations. But usually, okay. it's just livestock. It's not so much pets. Okay. But I did. I did remove a lion here many years ago up, up in Mullen. Okay. It was just being a threat to human health and safety. They asked me to remove it, and we went okay. and caught it with dogs and got rid of it. Because I, I remember, a, 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 it's been quite a while ago, but they had lions come down like into Canfield and the school area it's been quite a few years ago and that would probably be your if, yeah. if that became a problem it'd be either me or fish and game where yeah. they're kind of a you know a threat to human health and safety yeah. they if they want to ask me i can if like today they call and ask me if i would help them try and get rid of that one yeah okay. sometimes they handle those sometimes i do but if it's livestock then it's mainly me okay and i do you know bears grizzly bears black bears lions wolves Trap beaver, coyotes, a lot of coyotes. Yeah, I always forget coyotes. That's mm-hmm. that's really the main thing that I do is coyotes. But I, it's on the lions are lions going down and they're kind of on the increase. I've already removed four this spring. Uh, I've heard a lot more sightings too of them too. Mm-hmm. Well, we, I think my dad said he had one down through his pasture because the horses were. Uh, you're a pinehurst, aren't you? No, my dad lives up the North Fork. Oh, okay. But um, his healer start going nuts too mm. well like Pam's cousin my wife's cousin the house just down they have a little campground and they're sitting around their campfire and the dog takes off across Beaver Creek and a lion got it right there in front of them oh boy really yeah she they got it up they got it but uh, right there in front of them that quick and the, and that lion had been there a while watching mm-hmm. and nobody mm-hmm. knew it and so they're here yeah yeah, it just seems like you're getting there. There's getting to be more human interaction, you know, than there, than there ever was be there. Because they used to be really, you know, they, they were they stand off, and you know, you're starting to see them more. It's just kind of they're different. they're getting really used to people. Yeah, yeah. It's surprising some of the things mm-hmm. like when it gets dark, they don't really have a lot of fear coming right down in mm-hmm. town and. Well, and like over on over on Beaver Creek, you know, with all the new housing and stuff going on up there, you know, the interface, you know, you get a lot more people, you get a lot more opportunity 
they're going into the the animals' territory mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and settling. Yeah, so, that's the same. I mean, we're, so, we're expanding into their territory, yeah. so they're. Whereas where they used to be able to cross with impunity, you know, quite a few places now, they're going to be spotted every time they cross. So. Mm-hmm. Now, with chickens and, and horses and things like that, they, they would be considered livestock as well? Or how does that, how do they? Definitely horses. Definitely horses. Horses, sheep, okay. goats. You know, there's been a few times that I removed a lion when it was getting into chickens. Chickens are kind of, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Usually they, fish and game will kind of say, hey, try and pin them up. You know, you can't just free range. Mm-hmm. I can yeah. get coyotes when they're getting chickens, but usually okay. lion or bear. I have a couple times that you know, if it, especially if it's like a commercial type off or something like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. But if they just got a couple chickens, that's kind of mm-hmm. build your coop. And keep yeah, it secure. <laughs> I'm just wondering how how far that they they what what livestock exactly how far that how Llama, far that goes llamas alpacas llamas okay. pigs goats sheep. It cattle, doesn't matter the number. Horses. You can just have one horse, and that's considered. yeah. Okay. Yeah, because how do I? You know what I mean? Yep. I can't say that only because you only have one horse, yeah. you're not as important as a guy that's got yeah fifty yeah. cows. You can't. We just want to make sure our viewers know that that you know if they yeah. have a horse or if they have a goat. Yeah. I have very little problems with horses. I will say that yeah. I have had over the years a couple times where a lion. Attacked one and scratched it up, but I don't think I've ever seen yeah. where a lion killed a horse. Okay. But I have, and and the and the two times were definitely lions. I mean, there was lion tracks in the snow. There was four different claw marks about that far apart on the horse. But Rick, I've never I seen one kill a horse. Okay. But but other critters, yes, you know, especially goats, sheep, yeah. llamas, alpacas. That's yeah. what preferred. Really rarely with cattle, too. Yeah. I don't have that many yeah. lion attacks on cattle. A couple times, like I said, I never say never, but it's usually the, the sheep and the mm-hmm. goats, and, the, and they love llamas and alpacas. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. Even them big old llamas. That's back in the day. I mean, I've been doing this for 29 years. Back in the 90s, everybody had llamas. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of lion kills. I think it's because they stand, they won't run. It's like they stand Easy. off. Right. You know, it's like, a, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they're more of a protection animal, the llamas are. Yeah, they Kind of like a, a, a mule or, or a donkey. They, well, they, uh, they're they good protection as well. They are, but they don't always work. I mean, I, you got time, I can tell you a real quick story. It just <laughs> happened this, this year. Uh-huh. Clear down by Cavendish, some people, I was hunting a lion down there that had killed about four goats, a sheep, and a goose. And they had one goat left and a llama. It's actually a llama alpaca cross. I, can't, I asked him, I said, what is that thing? I said, it looks bigger than an alpaca, but smaller than they said it's a cross. Wow. Well, I'm not getting any younger. I'd been sitting in my truck since 7 o'clock watching with my thermal. I used this thermal vision when they couldn't. They killed them goats, and we had a goat sitting over there on the edge of the pen. Usually they'll come back and eat on that goat, and then I can shoot him. Well, I fell asleep at about 11 o'clock. I just kind of dozed off. I've been sitting there since 7 o'clock, pouring down rain, windows open. I can't shut the window because I have these new trucks. All your lights and buzzers go off when you even turn the key <laughs> on. So no window shut, no heater on, nothing. Just sitting there quiet the whole time. And I wake up at 12.20 here, and that llama just screech and just bleep. And I woke up, and I was like, he's here. Because he was making that alarm sound. And I pulled up my thermal monocular. And there goes that lion running across the back of the pan. But he wasn't over there eating on the carcass. That's what I was hoping he, wanted, he would do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, a sucker come in and got the other goat right underneath my eyes. I was sitting there watching, and he kind of ran behind a shed that was sitting right here. And a minute or two later, that sucker come flying around the back of that shed. And it was like 15 yards away on the dead run right at me. And the, what went through my mind was, oh my gosh, he's going to jump right in the window of my truck. <laughs> wow. And he didn't, but that goat was like, thought he was safe being up by me. He was sitting right over oh. the fence right there. Mm-hmm. And he'd come up and went chasing that goat off. And I'm scrambling, like trying to grab my gun and get a shell in, turn the thermal on. With them thermals, you got to turn it on, wait a couple seconds for it to warm up. By the time I got that sucker turned on, he'd already killed it. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I got him. And then I got him, but... Yeah, they were pretty bummed out that he got the last one, but they're like, "Well, we're getting a bunch of 4-H lambs for the kids, so at least we know we can get them and not have him hanging around." 
Jeez. So that was a bad story, but the <laughs> yeah. llama's one thing left. But and they are a good warning like that. Mm -hmm. And with coyotes, I think they work great running them off. But mm -hmm. they don't. They're not. They don't work too good on lions. Lions mm -hmm. just soon kill it. Yeah. I'll be done. But I don't know. Other than that, everything's been going the same. I mean, I'm okay. still here. And love to do more. Just make sure I'll make sure I respond to any calls I get. Okay. And That's you guys like, have already gotten a letter or something from the state, from the wool growers. Wool growers. Yeah. Is this so the I ADC board through. wool growers? Yeah. Yeah. They should have sent you a request. They don't really tell me. Oh, what for the, a next budget year, right? Right. right. And we're just budget hitting year. budget time, yeah. so I do yeah. believe how, I have that. Oh, how budget. much did they ask for? I do. I've had a curiosity because they don't tell me that. I would have. They usually send you a letter. I too. haven't gotten. You haven't gotten one. Yeah, that's why I had to ask because I haven't seen it. So. We've got a new secretary, it. and you know, we had a problem with the gal that was doing that a couple of years ago, remember? You guys... Well, I finally got it to her, send me an invoice every year. So I know that, it. Well, yeah, they're they supposed to do that, and you guys even said, hey, we missed a couple of years, all we need is a bill, and we'll back pay that. And that girl would never... She ended up being dismissed. She never would send a, you guys a request. That was a couple of years ago. Oh, it, yeah, it's been coming through good. So right it's, now, it's, so. it's coming good now. You don't yeah. know. You don't know what I they ask the for. I I'm just giving you a heads up. Really, the only time they get a hold of me is if you haven't paid. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, do you think you can go talk to your commissioner? I don't. Yeah. I'd have to pull it up, yeah. but I did. I think I did set it aside for our budget. I think there was a slight increase. I think they across the board, every county, they asked for a little bit more. So I'm just okay. kind of do what yeah. I Because it's kind of funny. Because I think you guys appoint me. And then the wool growers see it through, okay, and then, but up, that's all, down south they're all wool growers, but up here they're all cattle guys. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we don't have a lot of sheep up here. Yeah, so. That's why I remember when I first came across it, I was like, why are we paying this company? What, what are we it? doing? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. like the first meeting as a commissioner meeting with you guys, so I understand what I was yeah, it was and that goes to this district. That doesn't yeah. just go to Southern Idaho. No, yeah, that just goes. Where our district that one goes to here. District One. Yeah. Me and the guy at Riggins. It doesn't go anywhere farther south than that. Okay. I want. I like to let people know that. Okay. Because we're usually good. Some of them counties are struggling, you know. And I've worked really hard to have a good relationship with the counties and do a good job and keep people happy. And we're we're quite well off and I and I've made that clear. I says, Hey, mm -hmm. we're doing good and I don't our money shouldn't be going to somebody else. Yeah. And it doesn't. And they said, No, my boss says no, it doesn't. It stays with this district. Well and, and it's good that you're you're here and, and <clears throat> talking in front of the public so that they know that you that they have this option. Yep. And you know, if they have livestock that they're that, you know, I swear the whole thing's a goofy thing because you're a federal employee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Who's tasked out to the state but the county support it. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, so I mean, well, it's, this, it's the goofiest. This thing. program is funded. There's some county dollars. There's some federal dollars. Mm -hmm. The state fish and game pitches in to have me take care of this stuff because I'm trained. I mean, they've got game wardens and biologists, but they don't, they're not trained to go in there and look at a kill and say, was it a bear? Was it a lion? Yeah. And then set traps for it. So they have, they pay to have me do that. And the producers pay. There's a head tax on calves that are sold. They go directly to our budget, and there's a wool tax on the sheep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, before I get sidetracked, I wanted—I almost forgot to mention. This is real important too. We did just hire. We got we uh, our agency received some non-lethal funding, and okay. we did hire a kid this summer. He's based out of Bonner's Ferry. This was a result of all that grizzly problems. But okay. you've had okay. grizzlies down here. Yeah. I mean, there's been a couple three grizzlies, so this is, includes you too. He's called a, he's a technician for fencing. So he can do fencing. If somebody has, and this is not just grizzlies. It can be black bears too. If somebody, uh, you know, we're kind of focusing on smaller type deals like 4-H kids or mm -hmm. something like that. But if somebody's got a bear coming in, getting into their stock, he can come down free and put fencing up. And it's for right now, it's kind of a temporary deal. I mean, he'd put it up and he might leave it all summer or until the bear's gone. And then next fall, he'll probably take it down. If somebody wanted something permanent, then we can kind of work out a cost share type deal. Okay. You know, but we did hire a technician for that who is a, he's a fencer. He's based out of up there, but mm -hmm. he will, he will go down here. In fact, I have my boss check and see 
because they're a, a black bear come in and killed some pigs clear down at Orofino. And I said, are you guys gonna, you gonna want him to go that far down too? Now that, that owner said, I think I shot that bear. If he shows back up, I'll take you up on it. But he said, for right now, you know, we went out and sat and watched a couple nights later and he did get a shot and he couldn't find it, but he got a shot. So he's got trail cams up. So we didn't end up doing anything there, but I told my boss, I said, well, you check and see if, if you want this. His name is Max, Maxwell Martell. Okay. Goes by Max, Max Martell. He's our fencing technician. So if, if somebody has a bear coming in, getting into their pig pen or their sheep or goats, 4-H kids or whatever, okay. he, could, he could come down here and help him out with some fencing. Okay. That's good. good to know. Yep. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a good thing. And that's, we're trying to do stuff like that. We don't yeah. want to just come across like we just lethally remove everything. We're, we want to prevent the problem. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You know? Sometimes, sometimes, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, but it it needs to be removed. Yep. But we'd much rather just prevent the problem from happening, prevent the producer from having losses. Yeah. yeah. And that's great. So. Um, if you have your card or an email, if you have an email. You know email, what? I'm like out of cards right now. That's okay. But like an email address, yeah. I'll yep. send you a copy of the uh, oh, budget okay. that for 2025 that they okay. sent over. Okay. Shane, I have it. I just have to. Okay. okay my, e my email is uh, Shane dot L. So S H A N E. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Dot L dot Robinson. R O B I N S O N. At USDA dot gov. Okay. Yeah, I'll just forward that on And that's you. my card. If you guys ever need me, okay, or Thank anything. You. Thank you. I can give you my number if you'd like to have that. I think I gave you guys. I think I probably day. have sure. your card in my. But I'll certainly yeah. give it to you. Sure. Two zero eight six two seven eight five three eight. Okay. Yep. You get somebody with a bear or lion or coyote or wolf. I'll be right down. You know, and I've helped the county road crews with beaver problems too. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. normal beaver stuff, like in town, somebody has a beaver chewing their tree down, I have to charge for it. Mm -hmm. But when it's the county road crew, I, will, I don't charge them. Okay. Because you guys are pitching into the budget. So, yeah. you know, it, <laughs> yeah. it, it's kind of helpful at times. I mean, I've done yeah. a couple for Bonner County. I mean, when they got a beaver in there and it keeps plugging that culvert and they have to keep taking excavators out, that gets expensive. Mm -hmm. Might as well go remove the beaver so they only have to do it once. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Other than that, any questions or no? No. Any other Thank suggestions you. or comments or? <laughs> no, I appreciate you guys coming Thank you. and, and uh, you know it, it'll get out to the public and and hopefully we'll get more people involved and. Yeah. Well, we appreciate your yeah. support. Yeah. I, yeah. I appreciate yeah. your time today. Yeah. You bet. All right. Well, thank you. Well, we'll see you next year. I'll close <laughs> the meeting. We'll go ahead and close the meeting.